Hello everybody. Today I've decided to take you through a playthrough of the print and play game The Drifter. The Drifter is a solitaire print and play game that takes place in the fictional Wild West. The different components for The Drifter are the two page tracking sheet. There's page one, there is page two. We have the map on legal size paper. We have the combat sheet for keeping track of wound levels and finesse score for opponents. The table sheet, which contains the bounty suit event table, the weapon combat table, the skill table for doing skill tests, the loot table when you defeat someone in combat, and then finally the loot event table. We also have the rule book, which is eight pages double-sided. And then finally, we have the event book. And the event book I've kept on a iPad for ease of access instead of printing out the event book, for the event book actually has almost 200 pages in it. I have already performed character setup for the drifter because you have to roll for your hunch. I rolled a three. Our karma, your karma always begins with two karma and you start with the wound level of none. I have also rolled under the X column on the loot suit table to determine any starting items or money. I didn't roll any money, but I did roll a rifle. So we start the game with a rifle. And then finally, I roll to determine the starting bounty suit, and the Drifters today is starts with a high bounty suit. So we roll on that column to determine our events. So now the rulebook instructs us to go to event E001. The adventure begins. You are a gunslinger who has been living a hazy existence. Your brief time in this world has been mostly spent on the outside of the law, killing, stealing, carousing with undesirables, living a dangerous life full of excess and violence. Recently, you feel life might have more to offer. You know this way of life will not last, and now are looking to maybe put your wild ways away, buy a ranch, and settle into obscurity. You determine you need $300 and are willing to get it by any means you feel necessary. The Wild West isn't a place for the faint of heart. You will encounter many dangers in your travels, dangers that could take your life. There is also the law that is lurking, waiting in the wind for you to make the wrong move and have you locked away, to rot in a cell, or even shot dead where you stand. Now consult the entire section under, I've done all that, that just, to, uh, just dictates to you what rules, what options you have, actions, during the game. So we can jump right to the second paragraph. You wake up on solid ground to a combination of hazy fragmented flashes of empty whiskey bottles, bloody chins, random saloons, echoes of pistol shots and whooping at the night sky. You don't know where you are or how you got here, but you aren't too worried about it. This isn't the first time you've blacked out and ended up in God knows where. You just thank your lucky stars. It isn't a jail cell. Roll a d6 to determine which hex you start at on the map board. Six. Six is hex number 913. So we come to the map board and find hex number 913, which is right there on a town. Now to the rule book to determine what action to take. So actions. Here are all the available actions during gameplay. So actions allowed in any hex. Travel. Move to any adjacent hex, your most common choice. Heal. You can stay in current hex to attempt to heal yourself, but it requires certain equipment. You can part ways in current hex, so you stay in the current hex and willingly disband with a partner. It requires having a partner. Actions allowed only in certain types of hexes. Point of interest, so you can be able to address a point of interest if you've found a point of interest. That's only on a hex that contains a known point of interest. You can enter town, so you can enter a town, but only on a hex with a town. And then finally, the actions allowed only in combat. You can also do a flee action, which is you get to you can try to attempt to escape the combat. 
we are currently on a hex with a with a town you can see here in the legend that indicates a town and that's the kind of hex we're on so we can do a town action so let's do that let's so let's town r103 this action is only available in a hex with a town roll a d6 to determine available open places in the town that day and then choose which location to visit let's roll a d6 a one one, military presence, R-130. So let's go in the rule book to R-130. Military presence, I'd be in over my head. A large regiment of soldiers are passing through and you figured it's best not to stay. Move to any adjacent hex and then roll on the event table. So let's move to an adjacent hex. Let's stay along the railroad. Let's go to 1013, which is a forest hex. And now we have to roll for a random event. So to roll for a random event, it is based on our current bounty suit, which is high. So we roll on this column. We have to roll a D100. Let's do that. 73. So 73. E239. So now we come to our handy event book, which is on PDF, and it was E239. So let's go to E239. So E239. 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 If you are not on a town hex, go to E035. E035. Soldiers. There are numerous soldiers marching your way. You can approach them or try to hide. You decide to approach them, E004. If you decide to hide, attempt a finesse skill test. So this will be our first skill test. So let's do that. Let's try to, to hide. Let's try to circumvent them. So table C, hearts, finesse at minus two. So we come to our skill test table. Table C, hearts, with our current finesse at minus two. And our current finesse is a four. You can see here, finesse of four, because our wound level is still none. So four minus two is two, so we get plus two to this roll. Two plus two is four. So we come to the table here, rolling under the hearts. A four is a fail, oof. Now we can spend a karma point to re-roll, but if we do that, you, you, um, we have to keep the second result. So let's spend a karma point and re-roll. Let's try that again. Okay, we still got the plus two. Seven plus two is nine. So we come back to our table here under hearts. A nine result is a pass. So what happens if we pass? Pass, you slip by the platoon and they march onwards. Roll on the event table. So we have to roll on the event table again. Our day is not over yet here. Our turn is not over. Okay, we're still under bounty suit hearts. Let's roll the percentile dice. 98. So 98 under hearts. 98 under hearts. E054. E054. Abandon abode. You stop in an abandoned home to rest for the night. Roll a d6. Six. Okay, a six. Not abandoned, but nobody is home. You search for valuables. Attempt a hunch skill test. Oh, another skill test, but this time with the hunch skill. Table C, hearts, at hunch minus one. So our hunch score is three. So, and that was hunch minus one. So three minus one, two. So we get plus two to this roll. Ooh, three. And we can see here that three is a fail. Should we spend our karma point? Hmm. Well, it's good to have karma points in case we get into any combat as well, but you know what? I'm gonna risk it. And let's spend the last karma point. Let's re-roll that. Plus two, four, uh-oh. Okay, that did not work out at all. A four is still a fail. So let's see what happens. Fail. You find nothing of value, but you stay the night in comfort. Early the next day, 
E235. Well, it looks like our next morning gets a rip-roaring start here. Renegades, you are being chased by four mass renegades on horseback. Roll a D6. Three. Three. Attempt a finesse skill test. Table C hearts finesse minus one. Well, we get plus three to this roll. Ten. Under the hearts column, ten is a pass. Let's see what happens. Pass. You evade their pursuit. E095. Boy, this is turning into a long round. Only I've had a chance to do one action so far. Okay. So we found a, a home. We tried robbing it. Didn't find anything. The next day, got chased down by some renegades. Managed to evade them. And now we are onto the next evening, it looks like. There's a full moon. If you are on a marshland hex, E200. We, we, we are not on a marshland hex. We're on a forest hex. You set up camp in the wilderness. The night sky is illuminated by a bright moon with only the sound of crickets. Roll a d6. Five. Five. You dreamt you were a wolf. Plus one karma. Okay, we got a karma. So we can put that karma back over here. So we got one karma. And then you and any partners heal one wound level. Well, we're at max health though, so we're okay. Now it looks like there are no further options. So now we can perform a new action. Finally. Well, I think I want to get back to this town. So let's go to this town. Maybe we can uh, get a bounty or something. So we have to, we're doing a travel action. So the action we're doing is a travel action. You move your token into any adjacent hex of your choice. We've done that. We moved into the hex with the town. After you've moved your token into the new hex, roll for an event using the event table. Table A on the table sheet. Under the column, based on your current bounty suit, you determine the event you encounter. Turn to that event in the event book. Okay, so we can't get the town yet. We have to complete this action. So let's see what happens here. 82. So 82 under hearts, 82 under heart column, E103. All right, E103. If your bounty suit is X, go to E045. Well, our bounty suit is hearts, so that's no good. So bounty hunters, there are bounty hunters looking for you in the area. Attempt a hunch skill test. So another hunch skill test, table C hearts at hunch minus two. So hunch minus two, a little tougher than the last hunch skill test we had. We only get plus one to this. A two plus one, three, uh-oh, uh, that's a fail. So we see here, hearts, three is a fail. Should we spend our karma point? No, I'm gonna chance it. Actually, no, I better spend it, let's spend it. These bounty hunters can be nasty. So spend that karma and reroll. Plus one. Three, uh-oh, three. And as we know, under hearts, difficulty suit, hearts, three result is a fail. Let's check out and see what happens. There's the pass result table. Fail, the bounty hunters are on your trail. Roll a d6. Four. Okay, four. You are intersected by a chatty bounty hunter. R110. Now R110 means it's combat. So, our chatty bounty hunter. Bounty hunter, he's got a finesse of two. He is using a pistol. But if we defeat him, we get to roll on the, under loot suit diamonds. And we also get to go to event 240. So now, first we have to determine who goes first. So the initiative rule we have to go to is 110B to determine who attacks first. So in the rule book, we go to 110B, combat initiative. Attempt a hunch skill test. Table C. Diamonds column, hunch minus one. If you pass, you attack first. If you fail, opponent attack first. Okay, so I'll make that hunch skill test. Table C, diamonds, hunch minus one. Okay, our hunch is three, minus one is two. So we got plus two to this. Two, plus two is four. So this time we're rolling under the diamonds column. And we got a four. A four is a fail. Uh-oh. And we have no karma points to spend if we want to re-roll that. So we're going to have to enter combat with him, the bounty hunter, the chatty bounty hunter, attacking first. So now for combat, how this works is it's going to be 
He takes his finesse, which is two, and he minuses my finesse, the drifter's finesse, which is four. So the bounty hunter gets minus two to his roll under the diamonds column on the combat table. So let's go look at that. So we come to the table sheet here, combat table. His weapon is a diamond, it's a pistol. So what happens is he gets a negative two to this roll when rolling on a d10. So let's roll a d10 with a minus two. He pulls out his pistol and gets ready to shoot. Minus two, seven minus two is five. So we come to five, light wound. So he's given the drifter a light wound. So the drifter takes a light wound. So our finesse doesn't drop yet though. With a light wound, you still maintain your starting finesse. So four still. Now, so the bounty hunter is attacked. So now is the drifter's turn to attack. With the same formula, the drifter's finesse minus the bounty hunter's, the chatty bounty hunter's finesse, which is two. So we get plus two to our roll. And we're not gonna use our pistol though. We're gonna use our rifle here, which we got at the start of the game. And we, so therefore we roll under the hearts column on the combat table. So let's do that. Plus two. Ooh, 10 plus two is 12. So we come to the hearts column, combat table, hearts. We roll a 12, a D. So 11 plus result, we got a 12, is a D, which is dead. And there's also a star beside an asterisk, which says fast. Attacker immediately gets another attack. Well, we don't have to attack again. If there were multiple people we were uh, up against, a few bounty hunters, then that would be great. But we do kill him. We gave him a dead result, and the combat ends. Just like that. Bang. So now that we've defeated the bounty hunter, we get to roll on the loot suit, which is diamonds, to see if we get any money or stuff. So we come to the table sheet. The loot suit. Diamonds. So we're rolling on this column. So let's roll a d10 three a three three result on our diamonds eight dollars oh and there's an asterisk which says there's more roll again on the same suit okay so we got eight plus four what's a four result oh four result eight dollars so that's sixteen dollars got the asterisk there's more. Roll again the same suit. So far we got 16 bucks. Rich bounty hunter. So let's see if we get any more from him. Eight. So we got eight under, dim uh, under diamonds. $15. So 15 plus 16, that's $31. So we just come to our money tracker here. $31. So we can go 20 plus 11. That's a zero up here, by the way. So it usually takes like three tokens to be able to do this properly, if you make enough money. So $31, not bad, not bad. And that also concludes, oh, no, wait, plus 240. So let's go to event 240, see what that's about. All right, event 240, supplemental, roll a d10. Okay, so a little more happens here. A nine. So a nine result. Okay. They have a wanted poster with a target's location and it's nearby. Okay, so this bounty hunter also had a wanted poster on him. He had 31 bucks, but also a wanted poster. $20 reward, wanted alive. Roll a D6 to determine adjacent hex of bounty. So let's go, maybe we should go after this guy. So let's roll a D6 and find out where it is. Five. Five is Southwest. So Southwest, Jason Hex Southwest, and there's a bounty there. So Southwest to us is Hex number 1014. So let's record that. Okay, so Hex number, we'll do Hex number, no, point of interest two. So 1014. And the name of this one is, the name of the event number, we're gonna record this information. So it's hex number, so we have to record hex number 1014. It's called Bounty Event 003. So we have to record that under our points of interest. So let's finish up that information. Bounty E003.
Okay, so here we go. So point of interest number two is hex number 1014. Name is called bounty, event number is E003. So when we get to that hex, 1014, and actually I have a little token here for point of interest number two. Put that down there. So hex number two. So when we get to that hex and whatever actions we complete in there, we can also we can perform a point of interest action in that hex. And then we can actually go to event 003 and get that bounty. Try to get it anyways. Okay, so that concludes the that turn really. We're done, we had no further instructions. We went to event 240 and that bounty hunter actually had a, a wanted poster on him and we know where to find this bounty. So we're gonna go down, so we're gonna do a travel action. So let's move down to this hex, which is a travel action. So we do have to complete the travel action. So I still have to roll for a random event. But when this event is completed, as long as we still stay in this current hex, as long as nothing weird happens, we can then perform a point of interest action and, and encounter this bounty. So let's do that. Let's roll for a random event. Oh. 41. Okay. 41. E146. So we're galloping along, heading to our next hex there. We're in the grasslands. Revenge. We are confronted by someone who wants revenge for a past offense. Roll a d10. Uh oh. Someone's mad at us for something. Seven. Okay. Let's go to see what seven is. Seven, plus one karma, oh, that's great. So we get another karma. So we have our one karma. They shout profanities and empty threats, but promptly leave. Oh, so they came just to kind of mock us for a bit, but they don't uh, follow through with any action. And well, that concludes that, uh, that encounter. That was quick, short and sweet. So that means now we are in that hex, we've completed our travel action. And that means now we can do a point of interest action. We can encounter this point of interest. So how this works is that we come to our point of interest, which is on our tracking sheet, and we go to that event, E003. But we actually have to erase this right now too, because as soon as you encounter it, you eliminate, you erase that point of interest. In order to visit it again, you would have to find it again. So let's do that. Okay, so, E003, Bounty, you locate the target working on a wrench under a false name. Roll a d6. Five. Okay, five. So, you confront him here. You try to convince the target to come peacefully. Attempt a hunch skill test. So we have to do a hunch skill test here. We're trying to talk, him to, talk the bounty into coming with us. And t table C, Hearts, hunch minus one. Hunch minus one, so plus two this. Three, uh-oh. A three, hearts, three result is a fail. Should we spend our karma point? Yes, let's spend the karma point and re-roll. So that gets rid of our one and only karma point and we re-roll. Five plus two, Right? Yeah. Oh, oh no. Nah. Yes. Plus two. So a seven. Difficulty suit hearts. A seven is a pass. Let's see what happens. Pass. He is willing to go peacefully. Go to roll result six. He doesn't put up a fight. You tie him up and stow him on your horse. To collect your reward, record hex number any town, reward event zero one sorry event zero seven three under your points of interest okay so we've got the bounty that was pretty easy not too bad he didn't put up a fight so we, we talked our way through it uh so we have to go to town now in order to get a reward for this bounty okay so we've recorded that point of interest which is in any town so we can go to any of the any town that's on the map and then we can go straight to event zero seven three Event 73 and see if we get a reward. So we are not far from a town. There's a town down here. There's a town over here in the swamplands. There's also a town way up here in the grasslands near the, near the mountains. But we are only one hex away from a town. So let's go back to that hex. 
But so this is a travel action. So we do a travel action. We move up to our JSON hex, and now we have to roll for a random event using the event table. Da -lump, da -lump, da -lump, da -lump, galloping along, 52. Okay, 52. E zero, or sorry, E two, four three. E243, dangerous weather. If you are on a desert hex, E020. If you're on a marshland, grassland, we are on a grassland hex, or forest hex, E002. Okay, we don't quite make it to town just yet. There's a heavy, heavy downpour in this area. So a raging thunderstorm enters the area. Roll a D10. Three. Okay, three plus one karma. Okay, we got a karma. That's not, that's not so bad. The storm intensifies further, slowing you down considerably. Roll on the event table. Oh, so we got to roll for another event. We still haven't gotten to town yet. We're riding along. De lump, de lump, de lump. Let's roll for a random event. Seven. Seven is a E229. Okay, what do we have here? E229, Recollection Town. You recall the location of the town. Roll a D6. All right, so I guess all that hard drinking's kind of delayed my memory a bit. Living the rough lifestyle, head's been bonked around too many times. So let's roll a D6 and find out the location of this town. Two. Okay, two. Place a town on any forest hex. This town resides there for the remainder of the game. It can be visited whenever you are on that hex. All right. Okay, so we can place a town, and I have some handy dandy little tokens here. So we can put a town anywhere we want. Well, we already have a town where we are. There's a town here, there's a town up there, and there's a town down here. So let's put, let's put the halfway point. Let's put the town on 11, 9. There. So there's another town right along the railroad there too. So that's a nice little close to a halfway point to the other town. Okay, now that concluded uh, that event. There's no further instructions, so we get to choose an action again. And well, what are we going to do? We're in a town hex. That means we can take advantage of our bounty point of interest here. We can bring our bounty in and see if we can get a reward. So we arrive into town and we go ahead and go to event 073. So we've erased that point of interest because now we are interacting with that point of interest. E073 reward. You arrive at the sheriff's office to collect, to collect the reward on your bounty. Roll a d6. Six. I got excited there, because usually this game, it's higher you roll, the better for 99% of the things in it. So anyway, so uh, six, the reward went up. Roll a d6 to determine how much you receive. Oh, nice. Five. Okay, so they were worth 20 bucks originally, but we rolled a d6 because the reward went up since then. We rolled a five, we get 50 bucks, not bad. Okay, we currently have 31 bucks plus 50. That puts us at $71, 50, no, $81. What am I talking about? $81. So we wanna make 300 bucks. We're uh, making some headway, not bad. So we went to the sheriff's office and now we are done there. We have no more further instruction with that, with that event, that event result. So now we can choose what to do. Well, we are on a town hex. So what I'm thinking to do is let's go ahead and uh, let's go and uh, do a town action. Okay, so let's do an, let's do an inter town action. We've done this before earlier in the game and there was a military presence. So let's hope there's not a whole bunch more troops coming into town because that tends to make the drifter nervous. So let's go ahead and um, roll a d6. Two. Okay, so we got a two result, which is we can go to the saloon or the train station. Now there are two asterisks beside the train station here. So let's see what that means. So that means only available if the town's hex has a railroad track running through it. Well, our town we're currently in, this 
the spaced line here indicates this broken line indicates that that's the railroad so we are on a hex we're confirming here we are on a hex that has the railroad but you know what we don't have to really go there right now there's nowhere we have to get to along the railroad tracks or anything so let's go to the saloon and see what's going on there r106 okay partner saloon r106 i could use a drink roll a d10 something like a pirate there nine okay for nine result we have e012 okay what's going on here saloon e012 the saloon is bustling roll a d6 six okay six we have e220 okay all right so e220 lady of the night you share an enchanted evening with a fun loving lady roll a d6 one uh oh okay so one she has a contagious disease attempt a hunch skill test table c diamonds hunch minus two mm -mm. okay our hunch is three minus two one we're in a tricky situation here a one plus one is a two now that is under the diamonds column a two is a fail we are going to spend our karma and hopefully get a pass okay karma spent let's reroll okay plus one four four okay we got a four result under diamonds a fail okay fail you fail to recognize the signs and your remaining days are spent in a haze of discomfort you are dead